It is 26 minutes to eight. The politics of the car is making news. How they are powered, how they are taxed, where they can go and at what cost. The latest flashpoint, or potential flashpoint, what are known as low-traffic neighbourhoods. These are schemes to stop people hurtling down residential streets by plonking giant plant pots or CCTV in their way. The Prime Minister has ordered a review of them in England. Let's talk to Linda Taylor, who speaks on transport for the Local Government Association and is the Conservative leader of Cornwall Council. And the motoring journalist and former Top Gear presenter Steve Berry is with us too. Morning to you both. Good morning. Morning. Linda Taylor, what do you make of this? Is this the Prime Minister meddling with this review? Um, <clears throat> no, I wouldn't use the word meddling, but uh, I think what I would absolutely advocate is that uh, the LGA, uh, we represent those authorities that really do understand what's happening in our own particular areas. And the most important thing is that we must engage with our residents, our taxpayers to absolutely understand uh, what it is they want to see, because ultimately we we do have this really, really important question of, of making sure that we start looking at the impacts on our environment. Mm. But it must be with um, our residents. We must have those discussions. It sounds like you're being diplomatic. You're saying leave the power locally, but you're not keen on criticising the Prime Minister. I would not criticise our Prime Minister. I've got absolutely 100% confidence in the Prime Minister, but what I am saying is that we are well placed locally to understand uh, our own conditions and uh, what would, would possibly work in one area might not work in another. So uh, let's uh, complement uh, what we're trying to achieve here, which is ultimately a, a better life going forward uh, for our children and grandchildren. Steve Berry, low traffic neighbourhoods, do they work? Are they a good idea, do you think? I think they're a good idea if you live in one. I, I lived right next to one at Blackfriars in Salford, very close to Manchester city centre until recently. And it did make that part of town a nicer place to live. As you said, honking great plant pots at the end of the street reduced the traffic numbers considerably, virtually to nothing apart from the odd cheery bicycle uh, and a lad on a stolen dirt bike pulling a wheelie. But that was about it. And it made living in that part of town uh, a lot more pleasant. However... When I moved just down the road a couple of miles and then had to negotiate that low traffic uh, zone to get to where I was going, it made me massively annoyed. And that's the problem. They're very popular with people who live in them and very unpopular with people who live outside them. Ah, so Linda, here comes the politics then in all of this. It's, it's fine if you're on two wheels, not so good if you're in four. Well, I think um, ultimately, at the uh, end of the day, um, our residents have the ability uh, politically to have their say about what's working. So that's why, uh, you know, when it comes to an election, so that's why it's incredibly important that we get the message across as to why we need to implement uh, some of these programmes. But more importantly, we do need to get the buy-in from our residents because it's no good having a scheme that works incredibly well and then we go to the elections and our residents suddenly say right we don't like it and they overturn it this is not going to be a short piece of work we so need to work with residents to make sure they get the buy-in what, what are you I suggesting there's been a failure then both locally and nationally to, to make the case for these schemes yeah, I, I do, actually, and, and um, no more so evident as in um, Uxbridge over, you know, the, the result there. The, the residents didn't like what was happening, so they, they did it the only way they could, which is by that democratic process, and that's why... And it um, made absolutely no difference. Steve, this is a, this is a <laughs> reference to the by-election in North West London in this, in this uh, controversy over the ultra-low emission zone. Steve? Yeah, it's just electioneering. That's all this is. And the problem is low traffic neighbourhoods are implemented via a government funded scheme, but they're in, they're implemented by local councils. And the local council, if it's a Labour local council, is almost inevitably going to approve these sorts of things, whereas government is... Yeah, Rishi Sunak is coming out and saying, oh, well, let's have an investigation into this. Let's find out what they do and if they really work in the way that they want them to. It's nothing to do with him, whether they're implemented or not. Why shouldn't it's, he have a say? It's in the purview of local councils. So why is he even chirping up about well, it? Why shouldn't it's he? He's the Prime Minister. Well, yeah, but it, we all know why he's doing it. He's doing it because 
Chipping in about the Eulers extended to Uxbridge proved incredibly popular. The bookies were offering 25 to 1 against the Conservatives retaining that seat. He chirps up about the Eulers, oh, it's not necessarily a good thing, maybe extending it, oh, is that a good thing? People voting a Conservative MP, but the Eulers still got extended, so it didn't make any difference, did it? But, but it's a vote winner. So, hey, let's cozy up to the motorist. There are 35 million cars in the UK, 35 million drivers. That's a lot of votes. All those people are voters as well, by the way, aren't they? Well, plenty of them will be. Final words, uh, Linda. We're seeing, aren't we, the, the, as I said at the, in the introduction, the, the, the politics of the car becoming incredibly sparky at the moment, whether it be low-traffic neighbourhoods, whether it be em- em- emissions uh, in uh, urban areas, even talk in The Guardian this morning, a suggestion of looking at 20-mile-an-hour uh, zones uh, in, in England and whether or not the expansion of them is is such a good idea. Why do you think suddenly, as somebody who follows transport very keenly at a local level, this is this is now happening? Well, um, I'm as you said, I'm the leader of Cornwall, and our manifesto included uh, 20 mile per hour through our residential areas. That that is going to be implemented across the whole of Cornwall by uh, 2025. And that's because our residents wanted it and they understood why. Ministers, according to The Guardian, are considering uh, limiting the ability of local authorities to do it. It's a bit more meddling coming your way by the looks of it. No, and, and the Prime Minister's made it very, very clear that the car driver is not our enemy. Absolutely clear. But we, we need to have that sh- certainty of funding for the local authorities to be able to implement the schemes and that assurance. But it's incredibly important. Everyone understands, if I may say so, we, we can't continue as we are. We most definitely have to be looking at the impact of the climate mm-hmm. and we must work together to implement better schemes that, uh, that are beneficial okay. for our children and our grandchildren and uh, the road user. Nice to talk to you both. Linda Taylor there. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Steve Berry. It is 19 minutes to eight. Let's have a look at the papers. The...